Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Welcome to Postscript. My name is Michael Sullivan, business administrator here at FaithBridge, and I'm joined by our care and bridging pastor, Dan Slagle, who just brought us a great sermon entitled Father Knows Best. Dan, thanks for being here today. Sure. Uh, you brought us a great sermon uh, on the parable of the prodigal son. So thank you for that. A question came in, uh, you know, with the younger brother, we've got a younger brother and an older brother in this story. With the younger brother, it's really to see how he got to where he went. You know, there's uh, some outward signs sure. of the sin happening in his life. Uh, but it's not always so easy to see that you're becoming the older brother. So what are some signs, some indicators that maybe you're slipping into becoming the older brother? Uh, it's a great question because um, we don't always know. And that is what makes that particular approach so dangerous. Mm. Uh, your, your conscience can pretty quickly tell you if you're acting out younger brother-ish. Mm -hmm but you can go a long, long time and, and uh, not get in touch with your older brother mm -hmm. behavior. I, I would say there are several indicators. Um, if you begin uh, having a, a judgmental attitude toward other people, mm. uh, you begin sort of categorizing folks as good and bad, mm. acceptable and unacceptable, even if you don't do it outwardly, but just sort of mentally, mm -hmm. you're making up your mind about who's good and who's not, that, that's a pretty good sign right, right. there. Uh, a couple of things that I mentioned from my own life were uh, a seed of bitterness. Mm. When you find that uh, bitter attitude beginning to well up inside mm -hmm. uh, in places where it would not ordinarily, that's a pretty good indicator. Yeah. And, uh, and anger. Mm. Um, the, as Keller points out, the, the problem with the older brother approach is that it's results oriented. And you expect quid pro quo. If mm -hmm. I do this, then I should get that. Mm -hmm. Well, when that expectation is not met, opens the door for anger and bitterness sure. to come in. So I, I would say paying attention to those, those three things would be good, uh, good indicators of the state of your soul. Good, that's helpful. You mentioned Tim Keller just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. I know you mentioned him a couple times in the sermon and also uh, uh, Clowney. So what other resources, if, if I'm struggling with this, uh, either from the younger brother or the mm -hmm. older brother side, uh, what other resources are there out there that maybe you came across as you were studying and prepping? Well, um, specifically regarding Clowney and Keller, uh, Edmund Clowney was a New Testament professor, better part of the 20th century. He just died in 2005. Mm. Um, I could recommend anything that he wrote about anything. Mm. He's just a brilliant man. He was one of Keller's professors. Oh, Super uh, smart guy. Cool. Uh, I've got two or three of his commentaries. Mm. Really good stuff. And of course, Keller. Can never go wrong with that guy. Mm -hmm. um, the, the resource of his that I used was The Prodigal God. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so th those, those two would be at the top of my list. Beyond, though, um, resources, written resources, um, I think a good uh, visit to your counselor might be in order, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that was what it took for me to get in touch with my older brother. Mm. He, he really kind of brought it to my attention. Uh, otherwise, I don't know that I would have, have figured that out on my own. Yeah, that's helpful. And, and probably just community in general, uh, the people around us. Yeah tend to be able to spot things on us, just like we have a sneaky suspicion when we find something on them, which sure. happens from time to time. Well, uh, you mentioned also that you've been traveling uh, mm -hmm. around the world and you noticed you know, that everybody's looking for happiness. Uh, speaking of recent travels, I know you just got back from Lithuania, uh, a trip partnering again with ILI. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't you just give us a little update? Uh, what's going on with ILI these days? Uh, I know we had Peter a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. but maybe come from the Faith Bridge perspective if teams going out, what's happening? Yeah, so uh, I'm happy to report that Faith Bridge is integrally involved in the development of leaders all, all around the world. Mm. Uh, not only our financial support of ILI, the International Leadership Institute, 
but the provision of excellent instructors like yourself, mm -hmm. who traveled with me to India in July. Um, Seth Martin went with me to um, Lithuania. Uh, the thing that I'm most pleased with is the multiplication, not only of leadership, but also the multi multiplication of churches. Mm. Uh, Peter Pereira referenced when he was here how contributions made by Faith Bridge, financial, literature, teachers mm. have been a significant contribution toward the planting of upwards of four to 5,000 house churches wow. all across India. Mm. As impressive as that sounds though, compared to the lost number of people in mm. India, it's really yeah. a drop in the, the bucket. Sure. Uh, so there's still a lot of work to be done, but very pleased with what's happening there. Lithuania was an interesting place. I'd never been to that part of the world before. Mm. Um, it is a, a country that has a strange division. Half of the country are people who grew up and lived under Soviet domination. Mm. Half of the population are those who've known freedom. Wow. And uh, the two don't always mix. Yeah. And so it was uh, an interesting cultural experience to be there in the midst of that. Mm. But the young people that Seth and I worked with are uh, really on fire for Jesus, excited about the prospects of sharing the gospel in their country and seeing the church grow. And I'm just thrilled that Faith Bridge is the kind of church that cares about those things. Yeah, uh, you're right. It's fun going overseas and seeing how alive these people are and how hungry they are to share the gospel with others. It's really challenging uh, coming back here where we can get somewhat apathetic and just yeah. flat out lazy at times. And, and that's really the emphasis we've been talking about recently is uh, you know, wanting to go after the one and wanting to, to be seeking the lost, uh, which is just amazing. So awesome. Well, Dan, thank you for the great message you today did. and being here. And, and thank you for tuning in to Postscript. We'll see you back next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.